Thanks, everyone. My name is Hugo Bernier. I actually curate the SPFX sample repositories. And today I'll actually be presenting a new web part on behalf of Joao Mendes, uh, who's on the call right now, and he's actually going to be helping with in the chat with uh, questions. But Joao is one, probably one of the most prolific uh, contributors to the SPFX web part sample repositories. Joao is a senior Microsoft 365 uh, architect slash solution developer, and he typically builds really useful web parts that look good and that are usually ready to use, even though they're just intended to be a sample, they're usually ready for you to use. The web part that I'm showing you today is called list item menu web part and it does exactly what the name says it allows you to build menu items that are delivered from lists and documents and like most of Joao's web parts the web part supports you know th uh, theme background support uh, it actually works inside of teams and lots of other cool functionality but let's not talk about it let's demo something all right, so this is actually a page that is coming from the SharePoint Lookbook. If you haven't used the SharePoint Lookbook, I strongly recommend it. I think it's uh, lookbook.microsoft.com. It allows you to provision really cool, professionally designed pages in SharePoint with some sample content. This is one of the ones that I believe this is the HR one. And you see there's lots of cool content. One of the things that it has in the web part itself is something like this that says, oh, here's some links to benefits, here's some links to career, here's some tools and things like that. And as cool as this looks, these links are all manually curated, right? They're not directly connected to a, a document. If you want to point to a document, then you have to actually create the link yourself. However, Zhao actually came up with a web part that takes care of this. So if you go to my libraries behind the scene here, I have a HR policy library that I created and uh, let's click on it. And I created three documents here, uh, transitioning to work, travel policy and work from home policy. And I also created a category that allows me to group these documents. I also created another library called recruitment uh, where I put some samples like long resume template, short resume template, standard application template, standard offer. And then if I go to a blank page here and I just kind of edit the page. And hopefully if the demo gods are with me here, I should find Joao's web part, this menu documents. There you go. And again, like most web parts that Joao builds, the, the start experience is always great. It doesn't start broken. It actually tries to suggest something for you. But if I click on edit and I say select the document library, and I'll just say select HR policies here. And I want to group by category. And if I click apply, what we should do, what we should see is automatically, I now have kind of a menu that gets built that automatically creates the list of documents that are available from that library. So I'll just do another example of this super quickly. And then we'll go back to showing the code. Uh, list menu document. I'll click on a different library here. Uh, which one was the other one that I said? Uh, recruitment. Recruitment. It works better when you spell right. And category. And so it's actually finding the documents grouped by category. And again, oh, I didn't. Uh, there you go. And again, if we go back to these documents that I had created, you see all the documents that are listed here are actually the documents that show up in this web part. Now, of course, um, I'm not a designer. I didn't design a beautiful page like Joao did in his uh, in his screenshot, but it's it's a great way to get started by pulling content directly from a list. So let's look at the code though. So there's a few points of interest in the code, and again, I could probably talk to death about, about the code, but I'm really going to try to focus on the important parts. Uh, the first thing to point out is that there is a list items menu web part. Now, most SPFX web part projects consist of or have at least one web part class, which is responsible for hosting the web parts Chrome, and that's kind of that invisible frame around the content. 
and it hosts the property pane, it stores and loads the properties, and it's also responsible for telling things to the content. For example, when the theme of the section changes, and that's something I forgot to show you, is that the, the, the web part is section aware. The imports at the top of the class is really what's responsible for telling uh, the web part uh, what kind of functionality we're going to be using. So for example here, we're importing logic to do the to understand about the read-only theme, uh, the theme provider, and also how to handle events like the themes are changing. Another import here that's very useful is the PMP.js library. The PMP.js library, if you haven't used it, uh, you should probably attend the, uh, the Ask Me Anything session. I don't think we've mentioned it yet, but there's an Ask Me Anything session about PMP.js right after this call. Uh, in this case, what the library will do is it's going to be responsible to make it super easy to call SharePoint APIs and or graph APIs. And it will take care of things like automatically syntax uh, completion, authentication, batching, caching, and all sorts of other things. So we'll use the PAPJS library in, in this code later, and we'll retrieve things like documents and things like that. While we're on the topic of uh, cool PMP libraries, one of the other things that you may notice is that we have a property pane that lists all the fields in the library. As you saw, that's how I picked the category field. And another one that selected uh, the, the lists. And so those are actually controls that are available to you in the PMP reusable property control library. Now, we could have written our own code to do this and you know overwritten the drag and drop control and retrieved all the columns in the list, show them in a drop down, all that stuff. But why would you do that when you have controls that are already built that have already been tested uh, and, and verified by the community? You know, focus on really the, the value added activities is really what we're trying to do here. Another control here that's that's used is the property field message, which allows you to scream at people when there's errors uh, in a nice way, obviously. Um, and we also have the property field spinner, which actually just does this. Uh, I think the property field spinner is the one that does the please wait. Uh, so if it's loading and it's actually taking longer, it's able to show a little display message for you. Uh, again, the whole point is let's not reinvent the wheel. Let's leverage the logic that's already built and tested by by other people so that we can do the cool stuff like the stuff that Joao does. All right, so now one of the things that we need to do when we want to use uh, PMPJS, especially to call SharePoint library, is we just somewhere in the initialized web part, we want to call SP setup and pass the context of the PMPGS. I'm actually kind of nervous to talk about PMPGS when I have uh, Patrick and Julie on the call. Uh, so we pass SP setup to set up the call. And while we're there, we also grab a, a pointer to the Microsoft uh, Graph client so that we can make calls later. And I know I'm going quickly here. I'm trying to, to show as much of the code as possible. Uh, the other thing that we do is we grab a connection to the theme provider, and the theme provider is actually what tells the web part what theme is currently selected, so that if you change your background color or you change to dark mode, the web part will be aware of this. Uh, there's a call here called uh, try get theme, which actually tries to get the theme and pass the theme variant to the web part. And we create a connection to the uh, theme changed event so that the web part can react when there's a change. While we're on the topic of uh, themes, we're also making provision if we're currently running inside the context of Microsoft Teams, we grab information about what uh, theme color we're using or we pass the default to themes. Try saying Teams theme three times fast. It's actually quite complicated. All right, and then the fun part, when we're ready to render the web part, we actually just call the list items menu component and we pass all the information that we need for, for example, the titles, list ID, field name, what variant for the theme we wanna use and so on and so forth. Everything else when it comes to rendering the web part happens within the components itself. Again, we always encourage you to try to keep your functionality clear like that so that uh, you don't have to touch 17 places when you change your web part. You can really localize your changes in one place. 
super quickly here, if I go to the list items menu component, you'll see that the this is where all the rendering happens. But one of the things that I should point out is this is actually a React hook uh, class. I guess it's a class, yeah. Um, and so React hook is a more is a newer approach to actually doing uh, React components where it allows you to actually kind of create hooks or uh, really function that extend the functionality of a component. And so you can encompass all that function in one place. So for example, Joao here wrapped all the logic to retrieve the list of documents in a library in something that he called use list. And then later in the code, Joao is able to make calls to the use list hook. Uh, for example, get group items, get group headers, get field. And so this is great because again, uh, all the logic uh, for retrieving that data is in one place. And then the rest of the component uh, is responsible for just rendering the results. So uh, the results it got from the list, expanding collects and group, keeping track of whether a group is expanded or collapsed. Uh, it's all mostly straightforward from there. So I'm going to skip the rendering part. I'm gonna focus on, on really the impressive part, which is that used list component use list hook. So the use list hook here is actually, again, importing the PMPGS library uh, to make it easy to retrieve stuff from SharePoint. And then the use list has, for example, a method called get list columns. And what it does is it says, go to the SharePoint current site, get the lists, and then get the list that the person had selected by the list ID and then get the fields that are not hidden, right? Hidden equals false. I know it sounds very uh, simple when we look at it like this, but that's the whole point of the PMPJS is it allows you to create this kind of code that's that's using kind of a fluent syntax where you can just say something dot something dot something. And it's almost like you're writing a sentence more than uh, trying to hard code a API call. So we do the same thing for getting the list of fields. Again, um, we do the same thing for getting the list of group headers, and I'm not spending the time to explain each one of them. And we have a big one that is responsible for getting all the group items. Finally, we have one last one that is responsible for getting the lists in the use list component. Uh, use list hook, sorry, I should say, which is responsible for returning all the lists that are available from a site. But as you can see, all the functionality to retrieve the SharePoint code is really cleanly located in one place. Uh, you know, I would bet that you can probably copy and paste the use list hook in your projects and you'd be able to leverage it with a, with very little modifications. And that allows you to really be able to, to do some cool stuff. Again, this was a super quick tour of uh, Joao's code. Joao, I believe, is on the call. Uh, he's able to answer questions. I'll also be here to answer calls. The web part is available at ak.ms slash spfx dash web parts. Just search for Joao as an author or look for the React List Items menu web part. Thank you, Joao, for your awesome contribution. And thank you, everyone, for giving me the opportunity to show you some really cool code. I look forward to the next contributions from Zhao and everybody else. Thank you, everyone. Back to you, Patrick. Awesome stuff. Thank you, Hugo.